Yo, welcome back to the BSC4 channel. We know what's going on, what is happening today. What we're gonna do is we're going to rob Peter to pay Paul, but still working on this. Don't think that we're not. And we're gonna do this strategically. And thank you for all the comments below and everything like that. Just thank you so much. But we're gonna go up underneath here, man, and start, um, we call it, uh, shoot. We're gonna drain the oil out first, man. You probably can't see crap underneath here. It's dark as all heck, and I'm claustrophobic, man. So, let me go ahead and drain this out and keep it moving. So, we took the drive shaft out of that car here, and it's sitting right here. Now, this is aluminum drive shaft from a P71. Crown Victoria police interceptor, of course, aluminum. Now, if you want to use it for your five-speed situation inside of your Crown Vic, there's two options now, all right? You got a T45 trans or you have a 3650. I chose 3650 and I do have a T45 trans also. The difference is, is that the T45, once you add this yoke to be able to put into your five-speed, this is the description of the yoke and also the universal joints too, right here. You're gonna need a spacer for your T45 and the spacer goes down there to give it a little more gap because the transmission is a little bit shorter. Now the 3650 will be an exact fit, so you would need no spacer. So if you're doing this, go find you a 3650. Plus it's a better trans, a little bit more sturdy. And if you want to do a Coyote swap, that trans can hold up to the Coyote, no issues, man. So that would be your best bet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the junkyard now to go ahead and get some parts for this thing here because we need to try to get this all ready, ready to roll or you're not ready to roll, but just try to figure out what we're doing. I take parts off of Nissans because that's like my go-to vehicle to get these really odd parts. American cars really don't have it like on hand, on tap like that. So this is like a, um, this is Kim, this item here came from a 96 Nissan Maxima. It is a, um, we call it cruise control thing. It's air activated and everything like that. And then right here on this um, Nissan Xterra or Frontier or whatever it is called, this air solenoid I may need also. So Nissan is my go-to for like all those little knick-knack parts to make something else work because a lot of the stuff that they use were always air activated. What we're gonna do is yank this off, take this stuff home and kind of eyeball it up and see if this can work. Maybe it can work, maybe it cannot work. But we're gonna make sure that the air solenoid works and we're gonna try to see if this thing here works, put some air to it. If it moves, we're good. If it don't move, then you know, we're in a bad situation then we have to come back and get another one so this is what we're dealing with this is what we're gonna get this is how we're gonna roll with it and we installed this piece already I'm saving you guys a lot of little different scenes now this item here right and then you got this here and then you ground it I even soldered the wires and everything what happened was this thing is slightly leaking it makes noise and it shouldn't make no noise it should be cut off completely so it's not sucking properly Ooh. now I went to the junkyard and spent a little money on this I should have just stole it but see I've been trying to live a proper life man you know so this item here I had inside my garage and I used the Nissan thing here I mean even the Ford has one right here too so what I did was which is a good thing I hooked this up and then I hooked that back up to the EGR because I using the EGR tube to feed this situation right here so we go ahead and turn this car on and then we could kind of see how this thing kind of operates. Hopefully you guys can understand where I'm going with this maybe. I don't know if you do or don't. I just did this thing in a few, you know, a few minutes ago. So, car is running. Right? Negative for that thing. Positive for that thing. So, let's put positive, see? Now, Slowly, you can see that it's retracting back slowly. That's what I needed. Now, the situation that was the problem, oh, let me turn this off. That engine ain't that great. That's why we're taking that thing out. Otherwise, I probably would have used it with the build, but the engine ain't that great. All right, so back what I was saying. Uh, oh, when I uh, did this right, um, I hooked this up and then I blocked off this part here. I didn't even hook it up to the back to the EGR. No matter what I did, it stayed closed. And I was just like, man, I need this thing to go down. So that's when I hooked this up. That didn't work. 
But then when I put it onto the EGR, then now this thing retracts properly. So we have to make this work. It got mounting brackets out the wazoo. This has to work. The theory behind this is that it will be nice and flush. You know what I mean? And then I can run the cable just anywhere. I just have to make the proper mountain brackets and they got screws here, we got screws here, we got screws we can probably put down there and anything and we can kind of mount this thing up. How? I have no clue yet. This took me a minute to figure this out. So I was a little depressed that this thing did not work, but you know what? Cool, it did not work, it leaked. But that gave me the energy to go find this item here. And when I found it inside of the garage, it was a blessing and I was cool with it. I just made it happen, made it work. I didn't really didn't know what it was for, really. But I just like looked at it and said, hey, it looks kind of like this, but a bigger version. So to recap, took the line off the EGR, right? fed that through the bottom half of this situation there. But that situation there had three little hoses, so I just looped it, put it back in, right? Now the top one, this line goes to the EJR, right? This little valve really doesn't work that well, but we ran that until this situation here. Now this is the Nissan, what is it called again? The Nissan, the, 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 yeah. Come on, you guys know what it is, man. I'm trying to remember what the heck this thing is, man. What the heck is this thing is? It's a vacuum activated cruise control thingy from a Nissan Maxima. I don't know what it's really properly called. Maybe a cruise control actuator from a Nissan Maxima. I guess that's what they probably would call it. You know what I mean? Now, we got this bracket here. This is a blessing to have this. So, you know, we can figure out something. Also, too, on the end of this, I have that thing like this that goes on the end of this. So we can actually try to um, mount this thing properly somewhere on this thing over here. Now, this, I have to open this back up and close it. Um, I have to take that motor out that's sitting right there because the motor won't actually let this thing run freely like that. So that's why I said I probably needed two of these. So um, we're gonna put that right there, right? Then we're going to make some kind of bracket. Give me a couple of days with that. Maybe five days to really come up with something that's really efficient. Let's scratch that. Give me a day. Welded the bracket up. It's not pretty. Over here, I weld it right around there in that groove over there. Stick weld that. And then, you know, basically everything is stick welded. Took the motor out of this. All right, may need a different spring. Problem that I'm having right here, you see this little bit of opening? It's just opening like that much. It's not fully closed. I need something to kind of put it down a little bit right around here. I, I don't know what to really use. I need a, maybe a double spring probably and everything like that now opens close you know but it just doesn't it just doesn't close if you can see it doesn't close good on that side just like a hair or something like that. So what we're going to do is you know start the car. Yeah it's getting dark out and I've been trying to figure it out and the weather's been changing a lot too. Sometimes this engine sounds good, sometimes the engine sounds bad. So alright, the moment of truth, let's see how this works. Um, got the hair, this is hooked up, that's hooked up, that's hooked up. So let's see how this goes. I know a lot of people are going to sit here and say, man, no, 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 that thing is not going to work. But listen here, man, um, it works, okay? It's a really simple mechanism that works. You know, we can do all that other jazz with the little tweaking of this and making the computer actuator. I'm not doing that. I like something that's just really simple. Sometimes I overcomplicate things, most cases. But this here, I just really wanted it simple because I just need something simple to work. Open up at a certain time, close at a certain time. That's it, just like a goddamn store. Open, close. The hours are nine to five, the hours are nine to five. That's how we rolling with this butterfly situation, our MRCs, IRMRCs, whatever they you wanna call it. But it works, man. So, on the next video, we're gonna be explaining a few other things. We're gonna go more in depth on trying to get this thing to work on certain RPMs. That's what we're gonna be doing. And um, we're gonna be getting another situation, um, an intake manifold, because this one here, I'm messing it all up, but we're gonna get another one, we're gonna get a nice, real clean one. So, 
Next video, we're gonna explain this little box that's on the ground here with this little thing in my hand. Most of you guys know what it is, some of you guys don't know what it is, but my engine bay on this Cobra Roush rendition is not gonna look like that. The outside may look like that, minus the lights, because I live in the hood. I don't need no daggone lights.